Hey, this is Steve at Thousand Year Home. Welcome to my build. It's a shipping container home. This particular container I'm making into an ensuite bedroom with a uh, Jack and Joe bathroom. This is the office, my office. The front part's the bedroom. There's a really nice bathroom in between. Watch some of my other videos. I've got another shipping container parked over yonder, uh, 20 feet away, and I'll put a roof over the two of them eventually. And that'll be my uh, mechanical room and my washer and dryers, as well as my kitchen will all be in that. And then over the roof will be a great hall. That will be my living room and a, what I'm going to guess is a workshop. Uh, we'll find out. But right now, I try to get something done every night. Uh, and tonight, uh, I'm going to go ahead and try to get the ceilings done in that section right there. I'm working on drywall. Now, I, this, I'm already showered, so I'm really done for the day. This shirt, uh, I just bought. It reminds me of my mother. The, anything with butterflies, puppies, or birds reminds me of my mom. And my dad would be, uh, bayonets and a, uh, trench shovel. Uh, both of them great parents. And, uh, but I'm going to have to change out of this. I'm going to set up for the night. It's still 98, uh, so I'm going to let it cool down just a little bit. Uh, but I like to, um, I like to get started uh, while I can still see. So I might tape off everything here uh, once I, I get into a different t-shirt. So, but uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for coming on board. If you two uh, are interested in shipping container builds, uh, high quality, custom home that'll last a thousand years. That's what I'm building out of this. I'm going to laminate ancient building techniques, hyperdobe, earth bag, together with modern shipping containers. It won't be your usual ultra mod, modern um, industrial vibe for a shipping container home. Nothing wrong with that, but you can see uh, my particular shipping container. I'll cut, uh, these are hand cut cedar post. Uh, looky there, hand cut lentils and, uh, you know, uh, stained glass windows that I've redeemed. Uh, you know, the post in the corner, which I'll, I'll finish that up. So, and all of these timbers were actually, uh, cut right from this property around, around me. So, uh, anyway, it's a different kind of a build. And, uh, it's also, uh, I'm not spending the bank's money, I'm spending my money. And so I tend to buy what I need. Uh, I don't live in paycheck to paycheck, but I'm not, you know, I don't have a workforce out here that's uh, jamming busy. I've been, this is coming up on one year out on the property and I almost have this container done. Now that's uh, one year, two summers that have been extreme drought. It was 113 today in the shade and that made the soil temperatures 140, 150. This container, uh, it's pretty cool. The evening breezes get picked up in it. It's got good insulation, rock walls in it, 5 8 inch drywall, uh, reflective info stops in it. I've really done a very, very good job, but uh, I can't get done uh, if I don't work. And I do like to go out and do a lot of things. And I have more vacation planned for this month, uh, starting tomorrow, So which means I won't be here. Uh, because I'm trying to escape the heat. I just can't do this anymore. So, but let me change my shirt. Let me come back out here. Let me get to work. All right. I want to get this, this bay done with uh, mud today. So I really got some damage here where I wasn't able to put everything in. I see some nail pops there. Let me spend a minute fixing that all up. But any of those screws, honestly, don't, don't leave in. Because <laughs> that, and you've seen them. You've gone into houses and seen the, uh, the nail pops where the nails have come loose. You want everything anchored down. All right, a new day, and so I'm still working with my small uh, six-inch trowel, but uh, I scrape off everything. 
I always get the labels off. If you don't get that label off, what'll happen is it'll start spalling, get in your mud, and then you'll have little lines in your mud. It's just a pain in the neck, so I always get the label off and never well, but at least I know it's not gonna spall. And then you check your blades that you're, you're working with. Just make sure there's no dents or dings in it. If there's a big gouge out of it, it's not worth working with. Just go get another one. You'll forever, you'll be spreading that gouge mark all over your mud the whole time. All right, that's it. Let me go ahead and focus on that roof. And the heat's beginning to build up already. So, you know, 15, 20 minutes in, 15, 20 minutes out. I'll get this house done, but it's definitely... Uh, oh my gosh, it's so hot. <laughs> I'm sound like a broken record on every one of my videos. But it's the un unseen, right? The unseen enemy uh, in these videos. And I'm just a human, you know? So I've got a little bit of damage here. So, um, you know, I'll keep that in mind as I'm doing the as I'm doing the tape. Uh, some people double up on the tape in the corners and I'm good with that. Uh, I prefer to just uh, fold it with the, with the knife and not double up. I do that. And uh, there's no, like on paper tape, they have a little fold, right? Where you can follow the little fold. But this kind of tape, you're just going to have to work with it and self-fold it. And I fold a pretty good edge on it. There's a pretty sizable gap over here on this end. I might need to, to double up on the, uh, the fiberglass. We'll find out when I get Go ahead and cut the uh, any of the little strays out. I don't want to deal with them. They'll show up. They'll poke up through the mud. All right, so that's tucked in. Finish taping all of this so that none of it's in my way. You know, props to my old Banff pony, old Hank. Here he is, middle of a freaking drought, hot as heck, hot, hotter than the surface of the sun, I'm pretty sure. He's out doing his horsey thing. I'm back to feeding him extra oats, everybody. I got him all the way back to two meals a day. And there isn't anything for, look at that, this ground. Is it anything for this poor old mule to eat? There he is, out there doing his job. Making me look bad is what he's doing. All right, everybody. It was old Steve. That was old Hank. Fighting the Texas heat, and it is winning, let me tell you. These governors declaring disaster, disa heat ex disasters, it's no de joke. That son is angry, and... Uh, middle of all that I'm doing this project 
All right, stepping in. All right. Let's see if I could get the ceiling done today before I overheat. We'll do that much. So we'll find out. Look how dark it got. Now light, darkness, lightness. Oh, I got to go get my tripod. All right, let me rotate. We'll do a quality look before I go get my tripod. Yeah, that don't look too bad. That don't look too bad. A little skin coat here and there needed. That don't look too bad. All right, what am I going to do today? None of these fell down. I wasn't able to get those done yesterday. I got that one. I got that one coated right there, but I didn't get that. Didn't get the ceiling. Didn't get around this. Didn't get, you know, I do like drywalling. I do. I like the mud part of it, but it doesn't happen by itself. It takes a while to get in there and mud those seams up but let's get that going oh hey internet i didn't see you there you must be set up on my tripod huh let's go ahead and do drywall today i'd give you a weather report but it's the same weather report that i've been giving for months here uh the bill murray uh, uh heat extreme heat and burning edition it's hot it's going to be 110 or 115. The soil temperature is going to be 150 if I laser it. And I'm going to work in here until I'm out of mud and I'm overheated. And then I'll go sit in some AC. Thank you. I like that. I'm going to do that corner and this corner of this window. And then I'll change positions. Maybe I'll play music while I do it. I don't know. See those little crusties in your pan? All right, you know what'll happen. It'll flake off and I'll get in my mud and then I'll have a crunchy and it'll scrape lines through my mud. So I gotta get all those off. Show you what I'm doing off the camera. Everybody must be wondering. All right, so when I open up my drywall, I make sure that I don't leave anything on the edge because it'll drop down in and make a little crunchy. And then as I spoon out of it, then I smooth it over so that I don't have parts of it dry and I cover right away. Because sure enough, something will blow into it. Boop. There we go. That's it. I got that much mud. Let's see how far that'll take us. All right, so angle trowel for making corners. Listen, you watch the professionals and they'll just use a uh, regular flat, you know, six inch flat board to um, do corners and they'll tell you, oh, you don't need that. Well, they don't need that, right? That's a bit like Da Vinci saying, just paint with a chiosquero, right? These guys that are severely skilled and doing this all the time are just not, they're not gonna take time to change tools. But you, as Joe Blow in your own home, go out and get one of these, and you put mud just here in the corner. Yeah, you feed a corner like I did here. See that? It's looking pretty good, isn't it? It looked bad to start with. Anyway, you feed mud, and then you just trowel it in. And I'll zoom into that corner while it's uh, not setting. It's still wet. And I'll re-trowel it, and we'll all compare together. But yeah, not, and, and you know, I'm not going to argue with the professional, right? They're, 
because they're really skilled at their jobs. Uh, but listen, they're so skilled at their jobs that their skill level doesn't necessarily translate to us, right? So, you know, I, I put a little dab on like that in the corner. And you see, I got a shake and I'm still pulling this off. So a little dab in the corner, that's all you need. And uh, just like with a paintbrush, you know, you stab it and you feed it. And then you make an angle and then you just press it right in. And then I'll go from that side. In that corner, if from first pass, it's straight and very angular. Tapped off now because I'm using um, uh, fiberglass mesh, I could still see the fiberglass in there. So it will need a sanding and it will need a second coat. It might not even need a third coat uh, because, you know, I'm going to end up plastering these anyway. But uh, there you go. Let me do some more. I've already done that corner. It looks good. This corner over here needs a little help. So I stab it and I spread it in and then I press hard. And as I'm scraping it, I'm changing the angle, the pitch, down, 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 down. And uh, these look pretty good in here. Not perfect, but pretty darn good. All right, I can live with that. And uh, I know that uh, as I do these videos, it's easy to forget where you started. But where I started was a big, huge gap over here. Right there, that corner was broken. There's a gap there. And now it's all done. You know, let me, for reference, I'll go down where it's not done, you know. You can see here, I got some problems, you know. But as soon as you get in there and you just work the drywall and keep it as close to the surface as you can, these misses here, I'll go in there and I'll brush those out. See, there's, there's some drywall that I missed. Look, gone. Boop, fixed. <laughs> You know, I'll go in there with a wire brush, soft bristle, copper brush or nylon, stiff bristle, and just get it done. Uh, that corner is going to need a little more help eventually because it was broken. But uh, there you get it, right? Just a little bit of mud. And uh, as you're, you're mudding down in, I press for this big of a gap. I press in and I feed it in. Nor will I care when it cr ends up cracking with the wood expanding and un. Uh, uh, it contracting, it'll span and contract with humidity. I'll just simply uh, end up caulking that and redoing the surface eventually. All right, because I won't have enough time between jobs, this will harden up. I'm gonna go ahead and at least wipe it clean. And uh, that way I won't have a bunch of goo on the edges getting into my stuff. But uh, when I go to use it again, I'll you know, scrape it off. Ching, 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 ching. Scrape off anything else that's remaining.
All right, so this is Steve's Thousand Year Home. I'm pretty hot. I'm gonna go ahead and log off. Looky there, that's not half bad. I gotta wash up these tools and I'm gonna touch my camera, so why not? So quality control. All right, so as you notice, I'm cutting in around the, uh, I'm cutting in around the post that are in there. That'll give it a natural organic vibe. I'll really dig that. When I'm all done, the post will be linseeded and it'll all look good. The dimensional post here, I just went right up against it. That all looks good. The corners are looking mighty fine. So that was the, the be these are the before. We're all chipped up and whatnot. That's the after, right? They all look roughly the same. So this is the first skim coat. So I know I'm going to sand it and go over it one more time. Uh, it'll be fun to have these little, you know, these little natural parts of the log showing through the, the plaster. A little unusual feature there. Totally enjoy that. Uh, here and there, I could. It, it looks pretty good. It looks good in, in person too, but uh, it'll need to be sanded out and then feather coated in. And then it'll be ready for me to uh, take that Italian plaster that I ordered in and I'll, I'll do just this these windows. I don't know if it'll make it all the way out. And I, I've never done it, so we'll learn it together. So like, subscribe, follow me along. I appreciate your company. This is Steve at Thousand Year Homes. Uh, signing off. Bye.